Today I'm gonna to be building an end table and it's gonna be 42 inches long, 16 inches deep, and 32 inches high. I've already brought in all my wood and marked up all the pieces. Now I've gotta start breaking down everything to their rough sizes. Let's go. I've got all my pieces cut to their rough sizes and I use cutlass for this kind of stuff. It helps me stay organized and make sure I don't make any pieces to the wrong size or miss any pieces. And you probably noticed that I put these pieces of wood in a nice pile. This is called stacking and stickering. This is the best practice to do after you're done milling your wood. Letting this wood rest properly ensures that when you're done with your piece, you're gonna have a really great product. And speaking of great products. <laughs> I wanted to give a big shout out to Nyx for supporting this video. I'm really excited to work with them. I'm in the shop six to seven days a week and I'm in my boots the same amount of time. These are legitimately the nicest boots I've ever owned in my life. They are durable and they just feel and look like high quality, which I'm super stoked about because that's the kind of stuff I want in my life. <laughs> if you wanted to check out Nyx Handmade Boots, go check the link in the description. There's a link to all their great offerings. They have some really great boots. And if you're really interested in these boots specifically, these are the 64 Mahoganies. With all of our pieces properly rested, I'm gonna take my two pieces for my top and I'm gonna cut them down to the correct width. Then I'm gonna get them in clamps and while these are waiting in clamps, I'm gonna cut the rest of my pieces down to their final sizes. I just quickly mocked all the parts up so we can kind of see what it looks like. Obviously, it's upside down, so it's not gonna look like this. The legs won't be facing straight up. That'd be a weird table. But I've got everything set up here so you can kind of see what the next steps are. The next step is to get the side assemblies together and everything's gonna be done in sub-assemblies. So we're gonna taper the legs and attach these stretchers to the legs. We're gonna do that for both sides. Then we're gonna do the face frame and get all that connected together. And then we're gonna connect the rest of it, which is basically the structure. These partitions will hold up the, uh, the slides for the drawers and it'll connect the front and back in a more sturdy way. Now I'm gonna cut my tapers on my legs on the table saw. And I'm gonna use this jig I made. This is, I've got a video on this jig if you wanna see it, but it's very simple. It's just a piece of MDF with these dovetail channels cut into it and I use these dovetail clamps. Micro jig makes these. I've set up stops on this that I'm holding in place with these clamps here and these won't be taken off during the process. These are the only clamps that will be undone. I'll undo these, flip the piece, so I can get my two tapers on my two sides on each leg.
we're back. It's day two. I put on some new underwear and a new shirt. Let's build this piece of furniture. So I've taken everything out of clamps. The next step is to clean up the glue squeeze out that I've got to clean out. The top, these pieces here. And then I'm gonna to glue together this next sub-assembly, which is getting these partitions uh, joined and glued in. And then I'm gonna join and glue the face frame and the back apron to the legs. So that's the next step. And then after that, we're gonna start working on the drawer front and the pull, which is gonna be really cool. I'm really excited for you guys to see that. So check it out. All right, I just got the main box assembly out of clamps and now I'm gonna clean up all the glue squeeze out on this and same with the legs. And I'm gonna start marking up and laying out where my joinery is gonna go for this to attach to the legs. This is gonna be inset, the face is gonna be inset a quarter of an inch from the edge of these legs. So it's a little bit of simple math. Get that figured out really quick and get this attached. After that, we're gonna start working on the top, which is out of clamps and ready to go. I just need to clean up the glue squeeze out and run it through the drum sander. The table is ready for the finishing process, but I still haven't done the drawer boxes or any of that stuff. So let's talk about that process right now. These were the pieces of wood I was gonna use for my drawer fronts. And my thought process was I wanted to use Claro Walnut. The rest of the table is black walnut, which I love, but I also really love Claro Walnut and I wanted to include it in this build because I love it so much. I wanted the contrast of this more red wood against the more black wood. I thought it would look really nice. But as I started getting into the design process, I realized that this was gonna create a distraction that I didn't want. And I wanted the focal point of the piece to be these poles that I really like on this piece. And then between day two and three, I had an epiphany because I've been working with a lot of brass. I wanted to include brass in this build. So what I mocked up so I could show you is this. And I think this is gonna be awesome. What I did was I put a pocket that fits this piece in, and I also put a piece of brass plate behind it, and this will go over it and get all glued in, and that's gonna be what our drawer fronts look like. I think that looks sick. I'm super stoked on it. So what I also did was took two new pieces of black walnut that were grain matched. They just follow down the same board so that this is less distracting. With these two pieces almost looking like one piece of wood going down the grain, all the attention will be focused on this drawer pole.
for the drawer boxes, I don't really like making drawer boxes. It's very boring to me. So I bought this robot that makes them for me. And for the edge banding, it's kind of the same. For the joinery on these, I, I should have had my drawer box robot cut out all the joinery, but I decided to break out my pocket hole machine because I hate myself. Alright, the drawer boxes are all in, all that stuff's put together. I am, I mean, this is looking really great. Like, I'm really happy with this. I spent a lot of time on the reveal around the drawer fronts to make sure everything was dialed and nice and clean, and honestly, I'm just really excited about this piece. The next step is to get the top attached and to get all the finish on. To attach the top, I've used these before on the channel, but these are called Z-clips. They're really nice. You actually make a little groove in the wood, and this goes here, and the groove is big enough to where it can move side to side to allow for wood movement and then you just screw through this hole on here into the top. Mm -hmm. 